All right, folks. So in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what I'm calling the portable pie ham shack. Now, I like to do digital modes most of the time when I'm doing uh, ham radio. And uh, I've got a vacation coming up and I'm going to be going out of town. And I wanted an easy way to be able to take a Raspberry Pi environment to allow me to do digital modes with the uh, Zygu or Shegu G90, depending upon where you're from. So uh, we put a little kit together that is all running off of a lithium ion 12 volt battery. Now, if that sounds like something you want to watch, stay tuned and check it out. Oh, before we get started, I wanted to mention there's some buttons down below. A like button, a comment button, a subscribe button. Go ahead and click them. It'll make you happy. I want to give a quick shout out to our newest patron, Adam Melancon. I hope I said that right. In any event, thanks, Adam. Really appreciate the support. I guess the way to say it is that the system is built around a Raspberry Pi 4. This is the 8 gigabyte version. And if you take a look, I've got a number of things plugged into the USB. One of those is a 300 megabits per second Panda 6 Panda wireless adapter. And then the, I don't even know how to say the name of that GPS, but that GPS device. There's also a USB in there to control my keyboard and mouse. For power, we use the 12 volt, 12 amp hour Bio NO battery. It has a charging port and then it has Anderson power poles out. So this is the battery that we're using for the project. The BioNO Power 12 volt, 12 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Uh, here on Amazon, it's $149.99, but I think that you can get a better deal uh, if you go to BioNO's website. Uh, here you can see the dimensions. It's 8.5 by 2.2 by 3.1. It's continuous discharge current is 20 amps, which should be plenty for us. And it's peak pulse for two seconds is 40 amps. Next, we're going to take a look at how we get power from the battery into the Raspberry Pi. And this is a little project kit that I put together, and I call it the juice box. It has two power pole sets out, one power pole set in, and a USB out. The USB out is by a Drock USB buck charger. In the juice box, I use these USB buck converters from Drock. They're pretty cheap. It's around 12 bucks for four of them, so $3 a piece. I got a pack of four. One of them did not work. Now, it might not have worked because I might have did something to damage it. Sometimes I get a little excited and I, you know, lose control. Uh, or it might have been a piece of junk. But uh, either way, for 12 bucks, I'm still happy to get th three of them. That means they were $4 a piece. Now we're going to manage our battery or monitor our battery with this PowerWorks meter. It allows us to track the amps in. It allows us to track the watts out. Uh, I'm sorry, amps out, watts out, all that stuff. Now, it's not showing us anything because nothing's hooked up to it yet. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to connect the juice box. I'll use the single USB power port side, making sure that my alignment on the power poles is correct. And in order to power the Raspberry Pi, I'm going to need a USB-C cable. And then we're going to set that up as well. Here's the meter that we use to monitor our battery health. Now, there's a number of meters like this that are out on the market. Uh, I did get the PowerWorks meter because it's PowerWorks, and they generally make pretty good stuff. I believe that there's some by Tenergy that you can get that are much cheaper. Um, your mileage may vary. I decided to go with the uh, Valley Enterprises PowerWorks meter. Here is the 45-amp continuous, which is overkill for our application. It was $59.99 plus shipping. To interface with the Raspberry Pi, we're going to use this, and i got to orientate it correctly, this Rye keyboard. It uh, is small, but it works, and it works pretty well. The reason I picked it is because it's lightweight. It has a trackpad, it has right-left mouse clicks, and it also has a directional keypad. It does charge off of a goofy USB cable, and I don't like that. Here's the keyboard that I use, and I picked this up about a year and a half ago, maybe, maybe even longer. Uh, when I first really started playing a lot with uh, Raspberry Pis, and I wanted to control one across the room that was hooked up to my television. Anyhow, if you take a look at this one, it is 2.4 uh, gigahertz wireless. It's not Bluetooth. Uh, I do believe that you can get a Bluetooth version, but I did not in this particular case. And they say you can use it for Windows, Mac, Androids, PC, tablets, TV, Xbox, and even PlayStation. 
And so for the display, we're using this 10.1-inch uh, IPS screen from SunFounder. You could see me in the reflection there. Hi, folks. On the back, I'm going to take advantage of the HDMI port, and then there's a 5.5 millimeter barrel jack that uh, is used for power. You may have also seen a spare Raspberry Pi 3B on the back. So this is a cable that I made that will allow me to power the screen with uh, Anderson power poles uh, and a 12 volt source. This is the power cable that came with the monitor. So you could run it off a of 110 if you wanted. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to plug that into the juice box. I'm going to power it up. I'm going to spin this baby around and we're going to take a look at it. Now the monitor that I bought was built specifically for the Raspberry Pi 3 because I got it two years ago before the 4 came out. But uh, it's been upgraded for the Raspberry Pi 4. Here you can see the resolution says 1280 by 800. My resolution looks a little bit greater than that, and I don't know if that's some trickery that's played with uh, display virtualization or something, but uh, my resolution is greater than 1280 by 800. I have to check it out and see what it is uh, because it was set for 12, uh, 1280 by 800, but then when I rebooted it, the, everything was a little smaller, it was a little shrunken down. So I knew something had happened there. Uh, 110 bucks. Uh, I bought it two years ago. I'm pretty happy with it so far. They do have a touchscreen version, but I'm not exactly sure what it costs. Now this cable is like a mini or micro HDMI to HDMI. So we're going to plug the HDMI into the display. And then I'm going to take the other end and I'm going to plug that into my Raspberry Pi. I got to make sure that I got it facing the right direction. I always try to plug it in the wrong way. There we go. And now I'm going to find that USB-C cable that I got sitting around here. In this case, I use Anchor USB-C cables because I like them quite a bit. And that's going to go ahead and get plugged right into the juice box. And then we're going to power up, power up the Raspberry Pi. You can hear that fan spinning. I better keep this thing as level as I can. Here's where you can download the printable files for the juice box. I was describing a problem that I was having to my buddy Rob. And uh, he's really good at designing stuff. And he said, hey, give me a few minutes. And uh, about two hours later, he sent me the design files for this particular product or device or whatever the heck you want to call it. But if you take a look here, you can click through and see how I built it. These are the pictures of the one that uh, I built. Uh, it's got the dual power poles here, the single power poles here, and then the buck converter fits in there. There's not a lot of space in here, so you really need to be precise with what you're doing. And then uh, this is just another build pick. And then um, here is the pick of how I did the split of the 12 gauge wire that comes out of the initial power pole housing. The way that it's set up and wired is, is that you could push power into any of the USB or you could push power into any of the power poles and then uh, get it out of any of the power poles. You cannot feed power into the USB. That's output only. Now this thing should be booting up and there we go. We're in business. Ready to operate my porta pie ham shack. Now I'm using that tiny keyboard, but it's off screen. And I'm just going to move my mouse around. Oh, I got to turn it on. That's one thing you want to make sure you, if you get this right keyboard, that you turn it off when you're not using it. And then uh, you turn it on when you are using it. And there we go. The mouse is moving around. So this is the point in the video where I say thanks for watching, everybody. I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions or recommendations, go ahead and leave them below and I'll do my best to respond. Also, if you have any ideas about maybe mounting this or setting it up in a different way, uh, I'd love to hear those ideas as well. Thanks for watching, everybody.